Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip. Today, we're going to be actually taking a look at PowerShell profiles. And let me just get into why exactly we're looking into PowerShell profiles exactly. In the last video, when we were looking at the get PS read line options, we saw a lot of options. If we just actually run the code right here, get PS line option, we saw a ton of different things. It's where we saw where the file is that keeps all of our history, but we also saw a bunch of different options. Like we can actually configure what type of color that we have for a string, for the commands, for a different comment. So as example, we can see here the string color is blue. So if I do a set of double quotes here, my text is blue. And I did hint towards that you can actually change this. Now, if you've actually tried this since that video, if you go ahead and do a set PS read line option, and then you go colors, and then we go ahead and we're just gonna do a object here, and we're gonna change our color of our string to let's say we're gonna change that to a pound FFA 500 which is the RGB code for orange. Now, if we go ahead and we run this, we're gonna see now if I do a string, it is now orange, so that's perfectly fine. If we do a get PS read line option, the amazing thing is it automatically turns it into the code that it actually understands for the color, but we can see that it's actually changed to orange, so everything seems nice and dandy. But if we go ahead and we close this PowerShell session, and we go ahead and we open up a new one. Let me just start up a new one here and resume in. If we go ahead and do a string, we see that it's actually back to blue. And you might be wondering why exactly that is. And that's actually because PowerShell is constantly loading a profile. By default, it always loads in the current user and current host profile. So in general, there is four types of profiles in PowerShell. So let's go ahead and let's just take a quick look at what kind of profiles we have. So we have our basic profile here, which if we just do dollar sign profile, we're going to get a path here, which is our profile. Now, this is the current user, current host profile. This is the profile that gets ran last. This is the one that will supersede any settings that you set in the other profiles. But we can actually see here that we do have a profile dot current user current host. Now what this means, it means it's for the current user profile that you're using. So in my case, I'm using the administrator account. That is my user. And the current host is actually the PowerShell 7 terminal. So here we can actually see and this is going to be the current user and current host is going to be this profile right here. It is the default profile, the last one that gets run. So it's the most important one, really. And if we actually go into Visual Studio code, we will actually see if I type in profile here, we will actually see, I can't zoom in here, unfortunately, but you will see right here, that it actually points to a different profile. And that's because VS Code is its own host. So the current host will actually depend on what application you're using to run your PowerShell. So just remember that. And then there is also a profile called current user all hosts. So that's gonna affect all your PowerShell hosts on your current user. And then there is also a all user um, all users current host. So that's going to be for all your users and for that specific application. And then there is a all users and all hosts. This is the first one that gets ran. And then any changes that would happen to the code based on the current user, current host profile would then take over. So in order of precedence, basically, the all user, all host is going to be the first one that runs. 
then it's going to be the all users current host, then it's going to be the current user all host, then it's going to be the current user current host. I usually recommend really just changing the actual dollar sign profile. If you have to make the multiple changes to the multiple environments that you're dealing with, I definitely would suggest that because you might not even really want the same color schemes to different ones um, based on, especially with Power, uh, Visual Studio Code, where you might have some different add-ins to also modify some colors. I really usually set the profile for the terminal only anyways as well. That is definitely my use case. Uh, it could definitely be different for every user. So let's go ahead and let's actually see if this profile exists. So if we do a test path here, and then the path that we just have to supply it is just profile, we will actually see that it is actually false. So by default, all these files actually don't exist. So let's go ahead and let's create this profile and let's see what we can actually do with it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is a new dash item, and then we're gonna create a type file. And then the path, we're just gonna put that as our profile variable. And we're gonna force that just to be sure. And there it is. So we've created our profile now. So now if we do the test path profile, we will actually see that it is actually true. And then we can actually edit this profile pretty easily by just calling notepad uh, profile. And that will actually open up our profile here. Now you're gonna see it's blank and it is in a notepad here. So what I typically recommend is maybe just have a PowerShell window or a Visual Studio Code window open. And that will actually kind of let you uh, just type out your PowerShell code a little bit nicer. Make sure you have no typos in there. So something that's very common to actually put in profiles is actually all the modules you work with on a daily basis. So if we just do a get module here, let me just see what type of modules we have in our um, Visual Studio code. We have a decent amount and let's just see which ones are actually available here for me to bring in. This might be a longer list. There it is. So we have a whole bunch. Uh, now you can definitely have even more as well, depending on how many you've actually uh, installed as well. But let's go ahead and let's say we always want to have the import module. We work with Active Directory a whole lot. So let's go ahead and let's import module Active Directory here. And let's just go ahead and let me just zoom in here. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I might have done a bit too many times here. Let me just reduce that. There you go. So we're going to do the import module Active Directory. And let's just test it out here. And let's really show that all this code actually executes. We're going to do a write output. Welcome to Jacked Programmers PowerShell terminal. And then right after our write output here, this is where we're going to do our set PS read line option. And let's go ahead and let's just set one color here for now. We're going to do colors, open and close curly brackets. We're going to change the color for string. And we're going to change that again to our orange color. So it's going to be the pound sign F F A 500. Go ahead and let's just copy this code and let's just paste it into our profile here and save it. So once we actually have our profile saved, let's go ahead and let's close our PowerShell window and let's go ahead and let's reopen it. Now you're going to notice it. So here it is. It just loaded in the Active Directory. You saw it load in. And then we also get our welcome to Jack Programmers PowerShell terminal. So it even executes that right output. And we even see here that it does say loading personal and system profiles. It took a little bit of time. It took about 3000 milliseconds. It's not that bad, especially we loaded in a module. So 
if it's modules that you're using all the time and you're trying, you're going to import them anyways, it just saves you that time. You don't have to remember to import those modules. And then what we can actually even do as well is then do a string and we will notice it is already orange. So that is great. And you can do a lot of other changes to your profile. You can set to only save certain history, um, which if you want guys want to see a video on that, I can definitely make a video on that. If you let me a comment down below where you can actually create a function that will determine what gets saved to history and what doesn't. So you can actually specifically say any get dash commandlets, don't save that to the history. I don't really need to know, but anything that otherwise, make sure you write it to the history because that's actually a change. We don't necessarily really care about gets because we will get is not a very harmful commandlet, but everything else might harm the system. So we actually want to save that to the history. And that just limits how much stuff gets put into the history, easier to find what actually has been done on a system. There is a bunch of different use cases as well. Like I said, importing all your modules, customizing the colors for your PowerShell uh, terminal as well, especially if you are colorblind, uh, especially for the colors of green and red, you can change the error and change um, if we just do a get PS read line option here, we'll actually see that there are quite a bunch of green and red options. The red is error. So let's say you wanted to make error a little bit more readable. Um, you can definitely change that to a color that you can actually read, uh, which is much, much nicer. So that is really profiles in a tidbit uh, very, very quickly. If you guys want to see the add to history handler and how we can actually create our own functions to determine what gets saved to history. Please let me know in the comment section down below if you guys have any commandlets that you guys would like me to take a look at at these quick tip videos. Please let me know in the comment section down below as well. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, also hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out and I will see you guys on the next video.